Hello everyone and welcome to the WCG for match three of the Backyard Cricket World Cup. Big game this one, Australia the hosts against England, the tourists from South London and a chance to take early control of this group. By the end of today, one team will keep their unbeaten start intact, both teams having beaten New Zealand in their opening encounters. England have landed the first blow, Ricky Borat winning the toss and opting to have a bowl for the second match in succession. Both sides unchanged from round one, Australia keeping faith with the middle order that stuttered against the Kiwis. Inform youngsters Mabry and Cornforth could be key with the ball, but our player to watch today is Brendan Scott. The captain top scored against New Zealand without ever looking his best. Will England see that as ominous or promising? Ricky Borat leads the Poms and they looked very dangerous in their tournament opener with the captain himself looking in fine fettle. Gurpal Singh found turn in that game and could be dangerous here, but our player to watch is all-rounder Yusuf Sharif. He's grown in stature and confidence as this tour has gone on and the feeling in the England camp is that he looks due for a match-winning performance. We want to thank our sponsors Telsa Media for helping to make all this possible. It's a warm weekend afternoon in Sydney, perfect conditions for another gripping World Cup battle. Hi everyone, welcome back to the WCG where the big question for today is whether England can cause an upset. They haven't yet beaten the Aussies on a live game in this tour. And they'll be hoping that things can change for them today. Daniel Arnold's going to start things off for the hosts. Looked scrappy and uncomfortable in the tournament opener against New Zealand. Perhaps a touch of rustiness about that. Alex Smith will start us off. He's had a good tour with the ball for England. Leading wicket taker in the Ashes series despite missing half of that campaign with a back injury. Left arm over the wicket. Daniel Arnold facing Smith. Bumper and it's uh, generous from the umpire. Let's him get away with it. Smith, you might remember, dismissed Daniel Arnold twice in that Ashes series last week. The first of those was England's first wicket of this tour. And the other was from the first ball of a match. Oh, and off the legs. Has he got him already here? There's an appeal. No. Maybe off the leg. The appeal was for court behind. Wonder whether there might have been a touch of inside edge. Uh, Smith doesn't think so. Which probably tells its own story. Good start, though, from the vice captain. Oh, that's good as well. That one's reared up a little bit. Six foot five. He obviously does get unusual bounce. Looked like that one just came back in a touch as well. He's more of a seam bowler than a swinger. Doesn't get great movement in the air, Smith. But he can do things off the pitch. We've seen his cutter be effective already on this tour. And left alone again. It's that back of a length. It's a deliberate ploy from Smith. That is the kind of length which he got those wickets of Daniel Arnold last week. Looks a deliberate ploy. He's not going to pitch anything up to him. One scare already for Daniel Arnold. And Smith is just probing and prodding nicely at the moment. Oh, that's off the leg again. Well, this is dangerous, that one. Touch fuller and that one was the in-swinger. But this is a dangerous start from England and a dangerous start from Smith. And Daniel Arnold... Taking his moment to settle here. In the air. Oh, it's safe. Well, it's the end of a probing first over. Smith has bowled it well. Arnold survives. Australia, naught for naught. I think this is the cutter again. It's just climbed. Yeah, it's got big. Maplestone's in close there. Connor Arnold. Improved as this tour had gone on, he'd never bowled in a competitive match in any form of cricket ever before we came here. And under that context, his performances so far have been strikingly impressive, I think. Certainly hasn't let anybody down. Taking the odd key wicket to boot. Arnold to Arnold. Oh, brilliant. Very, very good from Connor Arnold. Very good start this from England. They're all over Daniel Arnold here. Out the back of the hand. Well bowled. Just stayed down a touch. Skidded on. Well bowled, Connor Arnold. Unlucky. The wizard, they call him. The Aussie boys nicknamed him Harry Potter when he wore his glasses last week. All stemmed from there. That's James Crowther on the offside. Smith. 
looks Mac and Field here gets away with that. Connor Arnold, this is all England at the moment. Touch of impatience, touch of nerves perhaps about the elder Arnold. Down leg, first run on the board, that will be a wide. Daniel Coco Arnold, of course, half century against England in last week's Ashes Test match. Not looking in quite the same rhythm here. That's up in the air, and this is out. Conor Arnold dismisses his namesake. First blow to England, and they have thoroughly deserved it. Brilliant start from the English tourists. They have not flown 10,000 miles to muck about at this tournament. Conor Arnold, the man who gets them going today. Again, it's that back-of-the-hand delivery sticks in the pitch a touch, and the pressure that Daniel Arnold had been under, relentless, couldn't get away. And it's a bit of a hack, really. He's gone for a blob, not for the first time against England on this trip. One for one, Australia. Perfect start for the tourists. And they are pumped. They're up to date. Joseph Ferry, the new man. 23 against New Zealand last time out. Played well. Aggressive player. He won't take any time getting himself in here. Oh, and there's a swipe already. I think that will be a wide. It is. Unfortunate from Connor Arnold. Nearly got the nibble out of Severi. It was a tempter. That was just a B shot. <laughs> Real buzz around the WCG this morning. Both teams really up for this. The English in particular, buzzing around. Flicked. Four. Unlucky. Connor Arnold's bowled that over really, really well. Last ball goes for four. Joseph Aries up and running. And that's a lesson to Daniel Arnold about how you play that back of a hand delivery that grips from Connor Arnold. Do not slap cross batted and reckless at it. Severi leads the way. Reminder of the teams, of course. Matt White, the big absence for Australia. England only brought 10 on this tour with them, so they will have the same team for every game in this tournament. They're the only side unable to rest and rotate. And that could be a decisive factor as we get deep into this event. Time will tell, but for now, doing well. In the air, six. This is a counter-attack from Joe Severi. He started like a train here. Jimmy Maguire, the new bowler. Full toss first up. Maples doing had no chance on the leg side, really. On his own in there. No mucking about from the old boy. 10 off 2 for him. What a start. Rolls us past 20 for tournament sixes. In the air. Always safe. It's been a tough tour for Jimmy Maguire. He struggled. And he won't be thrilled at having seen his first ball disappear, but oh, goodness, that's much better. That was very close. Oh, whiskers from that off stump. Thinks of very saying it moved a little. And well, ball, good follow up. Something in the pitch this morning. Saw that from the very first over when Smith was getting it to nibble it around. Jimmy Maguire, the same now, starting to settle in. And again, good. He's found his length. This is much, much better from the younger Maguire. Older brother Rob couldn't be here for this trip. Jimmy taking up the mantle. And improving as this over goes on. Oh, loose one. Nothing to worry about, really. Think he just threw it across himself a bit. Maybe a touch of laziness in the action there, perhaps. It's very, very warm today. Fatigue will be an issue. Punch starts a lovely shot. Well played, Joe Severi. It wasn't a bad delivery from Maguire. Punished in ruthless style. England persists with this 3-1 to one field. But if they're going to do that, you can't really bowl stump to stump. And here's a man who won't do that, Ricky Borat. Tends to target the back of a length and get it up outside off stump. Over the wicket this time. But down leg to start with. Loosen up. No harm done. England will just be a little bit frustrated if this gets away from them anymore. They've actually bowled really well. They've been good in the field. How the Aussies under pressure? Ah, uh, that's not bad. It's not bad from Ricky Borat. 
don't often see that from him. He's often guilty of bowling a touch too short, a touch defensively, but it's good to see him good to see him getting it up there in the early part of this over. And back to the short stuff again. Nothing wrong with the odd one. He did strike Joe Severi on the head in last week's Ashes series. Intriguing start. High energy. That's back of a length again. Reverted back to his natural length, but the direction not quite there. He's already bowled four deliveries. He's still got four to come here. That's better. Uh, good again. Second time he's wrapped Severi on the legs in this over. Pitching it up, he looks more dangerous. <clears throat> Lovely banner that in the background. Better beer, the Australian sponsors. Telsa Media, proudly our Backyard Cricket England sponsors for this tour. Severi living dangerously on that fuller length from Bora. If he can settle in there, it'll cause problems. Proud moment for the WCG and Matt White. Congratulations to him. As Ricky Borat finishes up, Matt White, such a shame that he's unable to represent the Aussies in this tournament. A knee injury that he exacerbated in last week's Ashes in the Test match. Hasn't played since. Very little chance of seeing him in this tournament, we're told. Slim to none. And what a shame that is, because nobody deserves to be out there more. Discussions between Borat and Crowther. Sam Dennis also into the mix. And it looks like it is Dennis who's going to take the ball. This is the situation as we find ourselves then. Good start from England, but Severi fighting back for Australia here. Oh, that's a good delivery. Round the wicket from Sam Dennis. Got up. He's only a little guy, Sam Dennis, but that windmill action, he gets some real life out of it. Severi annoyed about not getting a wide. Probably best leave the umpiring to the umpire. Umpire Daniel's done an excellent job thus far. That one probably will be a wide. Dennis again. Ah, oh, full toss. It was floaty, and Joe Severi's not going to miss out. It's a gift from Sam Dennis. Severi piles into it. Hit well. Almost swung himself off balance. It's a brilliant strike. Have some of that. And Australia taking over a little bit now. Joseph Aries got England on the ropes here. They didn't cash in on their early promise. And this is becoming frustrating. But Sam Dennis again persisting with this short length attack on Joseph Aries. Dangerous batsman. We know that. And again. And again, it's wided this time. Too short. No variety to Sam Dennis at the moment. Touch predictable. So very happy to ride it out. He's got enough from this over already. Pulled. Pulled for four. Again, the three to one. Offside field for England, but they haven't bowled anything outside off stump. This is an odd choice from Ricky Borra and an odd choice from England. He's either got the wrong field or he's got the right field and they're not bowling to it. And that is outside off stump and it draws the edge. Finally, Sam Dennis gets one right. England strike their second blow of the morning. Joseph aries has gone just as he was looking good. Starting out for him. Australia 31 for two and back in, not trouble, but in a sticky situation again. And it's Sam Dennis that England have to thank. Finally threw one outside off and got immediate reward for it. Must have been a very, very thin nick. So very annoyed. Not sure he agreed with that decision, but he's gone. Joey Azar new to the crease now. Only one ball to go in this over. Will Dennis persist with the short ball tactic we saw earlier on? Azar... A rising star for Australia. He can bat. Little diminutive punchy player. 
certainly can bowl. Hat trick against England last week. They won't have forgotten. Leaves his first. Sam Dennis a mixed over, but he's got the big wicket. 31 for two. Well, it's an interesting choice from Borat. Rather than going with one of his frontline bowlers and trying to nail home this advantage, he turns to James Crowther. Does he feel that Azar might do something reckless, perhaps? Or is he perhaps trying to rush through Crowther's over with a new batsman at the crease? Be interesting to see how he goes. Dragged it down. Oh, Borat has uh, done his bowler a big favour there. Captain having his teams back. There was a bit of a pudding from Crow though. It was well saved. He is a semi-professional goalkeeper in the football world, Ricky Borat. Or at least he once was. Whoa. Not sure that's carried. Yeah, it's landed just short. I don't think he was no ball, actually. And he wasn't. So, would have been out had it carried. So it's a bit of a life from Joey Azar. Ah, oh, that one is a wide. Just a moment of relative tranquility here. Oh, he's going to gamble on the single. Oh, and he would have been gone with a better throw. I think it was Yusuf Sharif out there. Throw was dreadful in all honesty, but Azar was pushing his luck a little bit, desperate to get off the mark, and he has done now. Perhaps that will settle him. Can he cash in on these last three balls from James Crowell, though? Will he try to? Oh, brilliant fielding again. England have really been up for it today. It's Sam Dennis on that occasion. That was a super take, especially given the injuries he's had to that shoulder. Putting his body on the line. Short again from Crowther and whipped for four. It's off that side fence and into the boundary. Too short again from James Crowther. It's a gift for Joey Azar and England don't get away with this one. One to go. And who will Ricky Borat turn to then? Oh, that's going to be a wide. On oh, that one again. Another run to the board. It's been a scourge for England on this tour, really, the wides. By my count, that's nine already today. In the air. Oh, he might have gone this. Where is it? It's caught. It's out. Joey Azar's gone. It's a soft, soft dismissal in truth. Australia didn't need that. James Crowther's loving it. Bonus wicket for him. Joey Azar's thrown it away. It's a full toss. How often he does this, James Crowther. He can sucker you into doing silly things. No question he was ever going to drop it. He's got a good set of hands. Azar will be furious. That's an unforced error. 38 for three. England suddenly on top of this game. And they've deserved it in truth. Excellent work in the field. Good discipline bowling. They've created chances. This is a different kettle of fish, however. The giant, Brendan Scott. Giant metaphorically, of course. And England will remember that punishing 94 he made against them during the Ashes. Absolutely destroyed them that day. Coming in with a bit of a better platform then than he is here, though. Yusuf Sharif. Trusted with the responsibility. Having a good talk with the ball. And it's a good start. Pacey, aggressive, good line, good length on the money. Temperature rises a touch. He's all action, Yusuf Sharif. Wears his heart on his sleeve. Loves to play with emotion and passion. Oh, and again, it's quick. It's a little wider that time. Brendan Scott looks fairly relaxed, but he'll know he's under the pump a bit. Sharif gives you nothing for free. Very testing bowler to face. In the air. Gone! Four down for England, and they've got the big one. And Maple's done with the catch. Yusuf Sharif. Once again, the man for the big moment. Terrific start to this over from him. England are flying. Goodness me, they're having a morning. Brendan Scott. I wonder if he's just premeditated a touch. Punched it in the air. A little bit out of control. 
Had the air of a lazy shot that, and the Australian skipper is gone for a blob. Big moment in this game that could be decisive. Yusuf Sharif, very, very well done. The unity in England's team now that was lacking in last week's Ashes. They look up for it here. The body language has been spot on today from the tourists. Riley Corn fourth. Came in under pressure against New Zealand in Australia's first match and made a duck. He'll be hoping for better here. Good length again. Two testing deliveries remain for Riley Cornforth. And I'll bet he's not taking them for granted. Yusuf Sharif is yet to concede a run at this World Cup. Goodness me. New Zealand couldn't live with him. Australia thus far haven't been able to live with him. Interesting that the wicket he's got is the only ball he's made the batsman play in this over, I think. Oh, that's too short. That's a bit of a pudding. Got that wrong. He's been working on that slower ball, Yusuf Sharif, for a long time, but it went all wrong for him there, really. Good from Riley Cornforth. But a terrific over for England and for Sharif. Who have we got now? Looks as though it's going to be the spin of Gurpal Singh. But oh, brilliantly against New Zealand. One of the stars of that game for England. Jack in the box player. Bowls to attack. And Borat has recognised that with this field. Himself and Sharif are in tight on Riley Cornforth. Oh, that's turned. May well be wided. Unluckily so. But I like this from Ricky Borat and I like this from England. They have reasoned on this trip that Riley Cornforth is a player whose temperament can let him down. No doubt those fielders are in there to antagonise him and... They'll be saying words to him after that. It's a beauty from Gurpal Singh again. He's having some start to this World Cup. Oh, I love that from Yusuf Sharif and Ricky Borat. Well done, the pair of them. It's exactly what they're in there for. Good fielding Sam Dennis again. Another who's had a good start to this morning. Full start. Can be a bit over enthusiastic at times, Gertz. All part of his appeal. Oh, wow, that's dangerous. He's going to get widened, but he won't mind that one, Jock. Goodness me, Riley Cornforce playing a dangerous game there. They've had a look at Gurpal Singh last week. You know he spins it big. And that goes the other way. Well, Paul, this is becoming a very testing over here. Gurpal Singh is probing. This is threatening. Oh, and again. Riley Cornforth can't pick him. It's another wide, which again, I don't think Gurpal Singh will particularly mind. He's got Cornforth here. Oh, up in the air and safe. Think there was an inside edge. Cornforth didn't look too concerned. Maybe it was just knee. Oh, and again, back in. Cornforth plays this one well. Maple's done good aggression. England are getting into Riley Cornforth. They know that this can happen. They believe they can rattle him. They believe they can put him under pressure. And Gurpal Singh is doing a very, very fine job of that at the moment. Oh, that one's not so good. That one's just escaped him. That was his leg spinner. But I like the way Gurpal Singh has bowled in this over. I like the way he's bowled in this tournament. Cornforth hanging on. Punched. Oh, Dennis couldn't get there this time. Four runs. It's a bit of a bonus for Cornforth. Sam Dennis has been faultless in the field this morning. Couldn't quite reach it. I think he just got a fingertip. But this is very well set up. England all over the Aussies at the moment. And that middle order looks brittle. There's no frontline batsmen there. These are all... All capable with the Willow, of course, but all predominantly bowlers, including Riley Cornforth. The big four are already gone for the Aussies. Questions about the composition of that side, whether they needed one more batsman in there. They feel not. Time will tell. Jake Butler, the new man for England. And it's good. Threatless, really, that. That was the story of Jake Butler's ashes, really. Very accurate, very containing. 
Batsman never really got hold of him, but never really looked like taking wickets. And again, good areas, but we're used to seeing him bowl fuller than that. We've not seen much of the traditional Jake Butler swinging Yorker. Partly the conditions have played a role in that, as well as the fully taped ball. That's going to be a wide down leg. This is just becoming a little bit bothersome for England. That now the 14th wide of this innings. Oh, that's better. That's where he needs to be. Oh. Australia just don't look like they can live with this. This English bowling attack. Been all over them today. No question who the dominant side has been. But the scorecard, you still think, could set up a tense game. It doesn't feel as though this is overwhelming pressure for Australia. It's difficult, it's tricky, but it's not disastrous. And again, too wide, really. It's either been too short, too wide, or both from Jake Butler in this over. Again, like we said, he's contained them. Only two runs off it, but no real opening for a wicket thus far. Yeah, and again. Well, that lived in between from Jake Butler. A decent over, but not an outstanding one. And Mapleston will finish the rotation. And it's been a rotation that has gone very, very favourably for England. This the tail. Sorry start for the Aussies, really. Aided even in there by, like we said, I think 14 or 15 wides. And that'll be 16 wides. Mapleston starts with a loose nut. Uh, better from Mapleston, but good from Riley Cornforth, who's really settled down. He got a bit of working over from Gurpal Singh, but he's really settled since then. Starting to find the middle of that blade. Still around the wicket. Oh, wow, there's a big appeal, and the umpire gives it immediately. Well, Cornforth is furious. He doesn't think he's nicked this. Well, where's he going, Riley Cornforth? Well, England have worked on him ever since he got to the crease on his mentality, and it bears fruit there. <laughs> That's a big wicket for England. Oh, wow, he might actually have a point, Riley Cornforth. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't look like an edge. It's hard to tell. Can we get a clear view from this angle? Oh, I think that's flicked his shorts. I actually think he's bang on about this, Riley Cornforth. No wonder he's upset, but he is gone for eight just as he was starting to settle. That's all a bit unnecessary. If you're going to throw a bat, at least get it more than a yard in front of you. Oh, dearie me. That's a poor effort from Cornforth. Thank Christ he hits the ball further than he throws it. But what a moment for Ant Mapleston. Great start for him. England have run through half the Aussie team with just 53 on the board. Michael Johnson, the new man. Played probably the most decisive innings of this entire World Cup so far against New Zealand. 16 may not look a lot on paper, but if you saw that game, you'll understand the impact he had on it. Not sure what the delay was there. I think a uh, bit of an issue with the field. Can Mapleston keep the pressure on? Gob, good fielding. Crowther again. Not for the first time. England on it here. Got down quickly, James Crowther. He's at point. Smith at cover. Butler at mid-on. Gurpal Singh at mid-wicket. Johnson gets through. Leg by a given. One ball to go before we reach the halfway stage of this innings and no question who it's belonged to thus far. The men in blue. Oh, that's not bad either from Mapleston. Got a bit big on Johnson. What a good 10 that is for England. 54 for 5 Australia. 
This is the story of the morning. Daniel Arnold was tortured early on, really, by Smith and Connor Arnold. That from the latter. And so too was this, the wicket. Big moment for the wizard. Daniel Arnold gone for a blob. And Joe Severi looked for a little while as though he was setting himself up for a big one. Counter-attacked before settling down. And it was uh, just signs that he was beginning to take things away from England. Until Sam Dennis found something. Again questionable whether he got back on it or not. But England didn't mind. Joey Azar fell to a really soft dismissal. That was a tame one. And then it was the big fish. Brendan Scott. Maplestone with a sharp catch. Yusuf Sharif. Excellent. That left Australia in the mire before another moment of controversy. Riley Cornforth. He didn't feel he got back on this. Replays may have vindicated him. Nothing, though, can vindicate that. Dreadful. Go to the gym, Riles. Smith back on again. To bowl to Michael Johnson. Oh, oops. He's done well to keep that down. That's a wicket ball at this ground. Smith is having a word with his fielders. I think he was just shunting James Crowther around a touch there. Oh, well, Bob. That was a bit of a slow ball. Took the pace off it. Set the tone for England with a good first over. Troubled Daniel Arnold. Didn't get the wicket, but played a part in Connor Arnold getting it moments later. Sam Dennis does the fielding for him again. Saw a little puff of dust at Johnson's feet as he struck that. Right up into the block hole. Australia still scoreless off the bowling of Smith today. Oh, well, no longer. He's not able to stop it. Got a firm hand. But succeeded only in punching it for four. Full toss. Uh, it's a decent effort from Smith, but I think he'll feel he should have stopped it. Oh. Well, Johnson immediately looks to the umpire, who says no. No. I think Smith looked a little surprised by that as well. Finish up the 11th then. It'll be Smith's last involvement with the ball in this match. Oh, and it's not a bad one. Jam down on it, Johnson gets the run. But a good spell from Smith comes to an end. He's bowled well today. 59 for 5, Australia. Well, shouts of power play there, I think. Yep, it is. Umpire has just signalled it. Michael Johnson has called for the batting power play. If you are new to the WCG and the Backyard World Cup, that means that for the next three overs, England will lose a fielder. Only three in the field for England. And it looks like they've taken that man from the leg side for Connor Arnold. And Sam Dennis again. He has been a titan in the field for England this morning. Very, very good work from Sammy Dennis once again. He's been electric today. Oh, and he's had a big waft. Connor Arnold, this is very, very good from England once more. Really have been all over the Aussies today. And Connor Arnold's been as good as anyone. Short pulled. Smith does the fielding. Again, Australia can't get away. They cannot pick these gaps. Smith, the tallest fielder for England, alone on that leg side to cover the ground. And they've backed Connor Arnold up brilliantly in this over. And they've got the rewards for it too. Well, that comes from pressure. England terrific in the field in this over. And Connor Arnold bears the fruits of it. Johnson has hacked at one. Again, it's that back of the hand ball we saw from Arnold earlier on. He's got two wickets with that today. It's a wild swipe from Johnson. And it comes from pressured English fielding. Very, very good from the Taurus. He's gone for five. Connor Arnold has two for six. I think you heard the cries of you are a wizard there. And they're not wrong. Mickey Maybury. What has he got in his locker? Started this World Cup with a first baller against New Zealand. 
Do Australia have the confidence that he can dig them out of this particular hole? And Dennis again does the work out there. That was a little easier for him, but you still got to do it. Did it with a plomb. Connor Arnold has been excellent. On course for a wicket maiden. Oh, and he's not going to get it. Wide ball. That's a shame. But just a footnote, really, on Connor Arnold's day, that. Improved as this tour has gone on. Deserved his good fortunes, Connor Arnold. And I would argue he is the bowler on this tour for England. In terms of what was expected versus what he's delivered, you could argue he's been their biggest overachiever on this tour and improved consistently as it's gone along. He's gotten better and better from being out there. And again, finishes on a high point. Mickey Mabry lucky to survive. Excellent from Conor Arnold. What a good spell that was from him. And that, let me remind you, was a power play over and Conor Arnold has gone for just two off of it. That's a terrific effort, as well as taking the wicket of Johnson. Can Ricky Borat take the wicket of Michael Mabry? He will certainly hope so. Oh, and he has! Oh, what is that here? It's not leg stump over! Mickey Mabry's gone for a blob, second game in a row. And England, seven on the Australian tally now. Goodness me, they're having some start. Some afternoon, this. Reveling in it, and it's the captain this time. First wicket of the day for Ricky Borup. Just rushed Mabry a touch. It was a bit quick for him. He went back to one he probably should have gone forward to. And he's paid the ultimate price. He's lost his leg bail. Ricky Borup on the board. Mabry didn't put anything on the board. Doesn't look too thrilled at the send-off he got from Jake Butler. England flying. Jake Kasacha, the hero of the hour against New Zealand last time out. <laughs> I think you just heard the call. Sam Dennis, who's been all over this game. Sam Dennis' imprints has been everywhere. Just the call of wasting the power play here, lads. Seven deliveries. They've lost two for two in it. Good from Borat. Kasatcha leaves alone. He is a cool, calm, collected customer, Kasatcha. And no cause for concern for him. And, yeah, looking to be positive. I think he was just looking for the tap and run there. Didn't quite get enough bat on it. I like the intent that Jake Kasatcha brings to his batting. He is always on the alert, on the alert for things like that. Those little nudge and runs. Knows where the gaps are. Pulled, and Sharif does well this time. England excelling themselves in the field. This time it's Yusuf Sharif, who is among the best fielders in this England team, and perhaps in this tournament. Oh, full toss, and it's Maples done this time. Goodness me, they're getting nothing, Australia. England are giving them nothing in the field. What will it take for the Aussies to pick a gap here? Oh, that's the consequence. The pressure keeps building and the big shots come. This is terrific from England. They have been outstanding all the way through this match. And it's been led by their efforts in the field. And the bowlers have been backed up to their hilt. That's a wicket maiden in the power play from Ricky Borat. And the last thing Australia will have wanted to see is Yusuf Sharif. But Kasacha negotiates his first ball. Gets himself off the mark in the process. It's been a stunning collapse from the Aussies, really. Lest we forget, they were 31 for one in the time it's taken to double that score. They've lost six wickets. Yusuf Sharif now. It's another slower ball and it's another wicket. Oh, that's such good bowling from Yusuf Sharif. Wonderful stuff. Brilliant backyard entertainment from England. All their skills are on display today. Jake Kasatcha got nowhere near it. He joins the procession. Oh, that's terrific. Bowls it like a little egg spinner. Yeah, no chance, Jake Kasatcha. And I think he acknowledged that. He didn't pick that at all. He's gone for one. Australia, the mighty Australia, the kings of the backyard game, are 62 for eight at this World Cup.
Josh Bolling, the latest in the firing line. He can bat. No question of that. Made his career best in the Ashes last week in the Test match. Had a bit of luck along the way, but gave it a good thump. Different kettle of fish when Yusuf Sharif has got his tail up, though. He is becoming a very, very serious proposition in backyard cricket, Yusuf Sharif. And look at those power play numbers. Well, that will soon quickly change it. Josh Bolling, boundary first ball. First impact Australia have made on this power play, and it was the 15th ball of it. Easy, really. That was very nice from Josh Bolling. And leaves alone. Sharif reverts back to his original length. That's not bad either. From both players, really. Bolling's not going to take any chances. Doesn't need to either, really. Leaves that alone. A terrific over from Yusuf Sharif. Another who's had a brilliant day. Two for nine for him. Outstanding. Well done. Is that your first beer for the day? No, no. 66 for eight. The question, really, how close to three figures can Australia get? They've only got Pat McGregor to come after this. Bolling and McGregor can bat. And they can bat against England. We saw that at various points in the Ashes. This feels a little different, though. This England is revitalised and very, very dangerous. They were superb against New Zealand. The brilliant all-round effort. Yet to bat in this match, of course. Oh, Maple's done this time. I think that just did a bit in the air. Maybe beaten for pace as well. They've really put on a show today. Just too short that time. Has a tendency to stutter on his follow-through Maplesden and almost jam his arm down. Doesn't really follow through. Look how side-on he finishes. I think that diminishes his pace, to be honest. And perhaps a bit of his accuracy as well. Not the biggest mover of a ball. He relies on pace as his main weapon. He's very aggressive. Lovely smooth action when it's operating well. And a change here. Three on the leg side. Ricky Boris going in close. Is there a short ball coming? Look how straight Yusuf Sharif is in there. So tight. Almost creating a little catching ring on that leg side. I like this from Borat. And Sam Dennis, the lone man on the offside. Jake Butler is the fielder off screen on the leg. Yeah. Apologies, it's actually Jimmy Maguire has come on to substitute for Butler. Fairly quiet over this from Maplesden. One to go. But quiet suits England. And it is another over that goes by with just two off it. Well done, Maplesden. Yet another who's had a good day with the ball. Have a look at that. Can you believe that? Who saw this coming? 68 for 8. The mighty Australia. The kings of the backyard game. Wow. What a turnaround from the Ashes. Remember England have not yet beaten Australia in a live match on this tour. You wouldn't know it from the way they've approached this morning. No fear whatsoever. Who knows? Perhaps that will come with the bat later on when the pressure starts to ramp up a notch. But for now, they have done everything they possibly could and then some. And as we've said a few times already, it's been led by their efforts in the field. Jimmy Maguire took England's first wicket of this World Cup. Been a little bit off the boil since. <laughs> Flicked and four. Nicely plays Josh Bolling. Don't think he got all of it, but he placed it very nicely and did well to keep it down. Actually, I might be being a touch harsh. I think he's hit that pretty well. Yeah, no, I think I was harsh the first time. That's played very nicely, actually. Well done, Josh Bolling. Poor start from Maguire. Another off day for him. No, it's not getting better. Wonder how long it will be in this tournament before Jimmy Maguire's form starts to become something of a worry for England. Just doesn't look himself at the moment. 
Oh, oh slow ball, and that one has done a bit. A lot better. Pulled the pace down, and his range was on it then. Bolling, for his part, will feel we might have missed out on one there that was there to be cut. Straighter from Maguire, better from Maguire. Good aggression from Crowther in the field. Flicked and fielded by Borough. Not much gets through the England skipper. That one was no different. Coming towards the end of the 16th. And a full start again. Maguire apologises. I think it was actually Bolling that pulled away. Hostilities resume. Miss hit. Oh, and it's gone through. Well, that's the first error Sam Dennis has made today. He's been the best of the English fielders. And there's a lot of competition for that accolade, but he's been excellent. This is the first real error he's made. It just went under him. Maybe a bit of tired. Tired hands, tired energy in that. It's very, very hot under the Sydney sun here. It is baking and the sun is shining directly on the middle of the square. Gets home that time. One of the curiosities of backyard cricket in amongst a score of 78 for 8. Jimmy Maguire has bowled two overs, naught for 21. England should be fine today. But that could become a problem as we go on. We'll see. But he's done for the day. Sam Dennis comes in. Took a wicket earlier on. Took a good wicket earlier on of top scorer Joe Severi. Still the only man to make double figures before Bolling. And Bolling's gone. Full toss from Sam Dennis. But again, bit of a lazy stroke from the Australians. Understandable for a number nine. Disappointing nonetheless. And Sam Dennis has a two far. England looks so relaxed at the moment. The enormity of what they're doing doesn't really seem to have hit them yet. That was a soft one, really. Dennis knows that's a bit of a bonus, but he's worked hard for it. Quite a quiet guy, Josh Bolling, but let his emotions be known for the world there. Gone for 13, which in the context of this innings is a pretty good effort. Just the second player to reach double figures. It has been a disaster for the Aussies. And their hopes of reaching even three figures at this stage look very, very slim. Pat McGregor can bat. Make no mistake about that. For those who haven't seen it, I won't give you any spoilers, but go and check out the second five-over match from last week's Backyard Ashes. Just have a watch of that and you'll get an idea of the kind of player Pat McGregor is. Punched and good fielding from Borat and Maguire backs it up. England's still alive. It's been impressive from England that they've not let the wickets in the match situation drop their concentration and intensity levels. They've still kept it up. It's very, very hot out there, of course. Oh, and a swipe from McGregor. Sam Dennis started this morning a little bit dicey with the ball, but ever since then, he's led the way, particularly in the field. Oh, and that's a ripper. Not sure if that's gone straight through or if that's just flicked McGregor's boot on the way through there. But it is another teasing, testing delivery. Persisting with a short ball attack, but just enough variation to keep the batsman honest. And there is the full one again, and it's good fielding again from Sam Dennis. Those hands have taken a battering today. But the end result might be, if he gets this delivery right, he's going to bring himself a World Cup wicket maiden. And that is not to be sniffed at. And he has got exactly that. McGregor thought about the run but didn't take it. Superb Sammy Dennis. What a day he's had in the field. Two wickets for him. And he's been up for it all the way through. Jake Butler and James Crowther are left for England. You have to assume Butler will bowl first, try and get the wicket before Crowther is needed. Although, first up will be Gurpal Singh. Bowled a really good over at Riley Cornforth and was unlucky not to get a wicket. And he's got the close-in catcher again. This has been a change from Ricky Borat for the first time on this tour, really. He's back Gurpal Singh with an aggressive field, and he's backed him in the field there. Good dive again. Australia, on another day, could have had 130, 140. They just can't pick a gap, and that's good from Singh. I've loved watching him bowl in this tournament. Looks set to be a star of it. 
not in the greatest of nick with the bat but with the ball he's just purring nicely and that's a good length again and he's backed it up himself went over bar at that time a rare instance of Borat not reaching one but Singh did his own work teaser and Borat again in the field four successive dots the pressure builds again this is how they've been taking their wickets all morning england and again it brings a cross batted shot and it's marvellous fielding oh goodness me that's outstanding from Ricky Bora oh my word he is excelling himself in this over he's a magnet for it Singh to finish oh and off the leg outstanding over from Singh brilliant from England 78 for 9 my my they've been terrific Ricky Borrett in that over is safe 12. All of which he would have had a right to be beaten to. It just doesn't let it happen to him. Jake Butler then. To bowl the 19th. Quiet first over from him. Slapped. And that is over the top. Connor Arnold's not tall enough. Nowhere near really. Uh, it was there to be hit from Butler. Arnold had no chance. Even had time to come back down on a second bounce before it went for four. Oh, that's a bit more like it. Big swing from Pat McGregor. Australia will bite your hand off for anywhere close to 100. Still a chance while McGregor's there. Clouted. Oh, and he stopped another one. And that might be the best of the lot. Ricky Borat. Goodness me, what a five minutes he's having. Extraordinary fielding performance from the England skipper. And it may well have just brought them a wicket. It does, and that is the end for Australia. 82 all out. Outstanding morning's work from a brilliant England side. Terrific performance from them. This the final nail in the coffin. Butler, the man who gets that wicket. Ricky Borat has bought that with his work in the field in the last couple of overs. England have been simply superb to a man. They have blown away the side that comprehensively beat them in the Ashes last week. Revenge tasting sweet at the moment for England, but they've still got a lot of work to do. The first half of the day could not have gone any better. Australia on the ropes. Only Severian bowling into double figures. Their middle order once again collapsing under pressure in the face of a fiery England onslaught. What a job they have on their hands to save this game. A morning beyond England's wildest dreams and it was led by the contrasting styles of Arnold and Sharif. The bowlers were outstanding for the most part, although Maguire's figures are an outlier. Could those extra runs prove costly? This is where it leaves us all at the midway stage. Australia up against it if they're going to stay at the top of the group. England have it all to play for. So while the players refresh, we're going to take a quick break with tactical talking points. Yusuf Sharif has been an early star of this World Cup and we're going to look at how he's adapted his bowling specifically for this tour. These are some of his domestic wickets and it's immediately clear that he relies on pitching the ball up and swinging it around to claim his victims. On this tour, however, he's enjoyed plenty of success hitting the pitch hard and pulling his length back and we're going to see how a subtle change in his action has made all the difference. In short, he's now bowling much more chest on. The image on the left from 2021 shows quite a wide gate on landing and a buckled back leg allows him to stoop a little lower, a little more side on to push through a fuller length. On the right from the opening match against New Zealand at this World Cup, the back knee is working much harder to stay upright. The result of this change is that when we follow through to the point of release, you can see from 2021 a much wider gait and the gripping fingers outside the ball with his arm at a roughly one o'clock angle pushing it in for the late swing. On this tour, his body weight is much more condensed into a smaller, more powerful space and that front arm is bolt upright at a perfect midday angle. This extra height allows him to create an extra yard of pace as well as bounce, crucial for baked Australian pitches under the Sydney sun. And that's not all he's developed. How about that deadly slower ball? Two victims already now in this tournament from his latest weapon, and the key to it is the dip he generates. 
He bowls this delivery with a slightly split finger, not enough to be easily detectable for the batsman, but enough to impart valuable wobble, much in the manner of James Anderson. As he enters his gather, the back of his hand and his wrists are directly facing the batsman, and he releases out the back of the hand almost as a two-fingered flick. This creates the misleading high release, seemingly a full toss most of the way down, and dramatic late dip that bamboozled New Zealand's Lambert. It's a fiendishly difficult and high-skill delivery, and he's worked tirelessly to teach himself how to bowl it under pressure. The rewards speak for themselves. Vast improvement from Sharif on this tour, the result of clever planning and dedicated practice, and it's paying off no end thus far. Fascinating stuff, but for now it's England's batting we need concern ourselves with. They're all geared up and ready for the run chase, so let's head back to Sydney for the second innings. Big moments these in the game. Australia must strike early. If England get a good start away, a good solid start away, it's very hard to see Australia having the time to take 10 wickets. But England's batting was brittle in the Ashes last week. Australia know they're not out of this match. They look fairly relaxed. They look fairly confident. They know they can win from any situation. But they've got the England vice-captain to contend with. who looked in good touch in the first game against New Zealand. Coming off the back of 92 and 141 in the last few weeks of the club season. Big moments ahead of him. Did not fare well in the Ashes last week. Started that series with a pair in the Test match. He struggled with a back injury. He reckons he's about 20% fit today. And he's facing Brendan Scott, the Australian skipper. Huge moments in the game. Australia must take early wickets. And Smith behind the first one. I think he hit him on the leg. Brendan Scott, it's a good start. Exactly what they need to do. They need to tease and cause problems. Got to make the batsman play. Smith likes to leave early on. They've got to make him play. And he does again and again. He's not timed it, but he's off the mark. He got that on that one. Big inside edge onto the body. And Smith's up and running. You'll feel good about that. Nicknamed the doggy by the England boys. Right in behind it this time. He'll feel good about that. First one, he's middled. But this is a good start from Brendan Scott. The Aussie skipper delivering exactly what they needed. He's been probing. Hit his length early. And again, it's not a bad length. The line just a touch wide. Too easy for Smith to leave that alone, which he will do. He's a patient player. Not the most elaborate at the crease. Compact. Doesn't tend to play outside of his game I think there was even a word from the Aussie fielder Joseph Airy at mid-wicket saying he felt there should have been a wide Smith agreed Scott got away with one and again that's well bowled that's a good over from Brendan Scott good start for Australia but Smith survives one for naught off one England boys giving Smith a G up. Severi the new man. Cut and cut for six. Smith responding to the crowd and he loves that. Telling them to amp it up. Brilliant start from England to this over. Joe Severi short and wide first up and Smith loves it. Think he needed that, Smith, responding to the crowd being on his side there. And left alone with conviction. Started this World Cup well against New Zealand. Smith, 35 in a run chase there. He was very disappointed not to go on and make a big score. Wide. England cheering every run. And right they should. They know they're on the cusp of something they've not yet achieved on this tour. To beat Australia when it matters. To beat Australia in a live game. Cut. Cut for four. Positive start from Smith. This is good from the England opener. Putting the pressure on the Aussies early. In the gap. Played with conviction. Joseph Eri has erred in his line twice. And he's been punished twice. England couldn't have asked for any more than this. Smith's into double figures early on and right behind that, well played. 
Brendan Scott caused him problems in the first over, but there's a conviction about Smith's blade now. Punched. And Bolling throws in. Pointlessly, really. And I think Smith's going to make them come and get it. And right, he should. There was no need for that from Josh Bolling, really. Smith never even motioned out of his crease, I don't think. Australians wasting their own time. Smith will use this opportunity to collect his nerves, calm himself. I think there was a word between Smith and Brendan Scott there. Perhaps a word from Josh Bolling as well. Australians trying to get into Smith. Right in behind it again. That was a good over for England. Smith looks good. Bolling on the wind-up again. Oh, this is good from Brendan Scott. I think off the back of that, he said to Josh Bolling, go on then, if you're fired up, you have a go. I think that's clever from Brendan Scott. We'll see if Smith falls into the trap here. Bolling's going to be round the wicket. Flicked. Oh, God! No, he's dropped it! Severi's put it down. Oh, Brendan Scott so nearly rewarded. He brought Josh Bolling on to capitalise on the aggression. Very nearly had an immediate reward. What a moment of fortune for Smith. The last thing Australia needed. From one of their most experienced, Joe Severi, the oldest player in this match. Unlucky Josh Bolling. Oh, and he follows up with a beauty. It's gripped and turned. Bit of tentative footwork from Smith. The momentum has changed quickly here. Josh Bolling has brought Australia back into the game. Just liven things up a touch. Smith needs to refocus. Imperative that he gets England off to a decent start. And leaves that one alone. That's got big. Signs that this pitch will continue to do things. Even having been baked under the Sydney sun. Bolling again. Intriguing battle. Flicked. Flicked for four. Placement perfect. Smith back on the front foot. That's a good counter punch. Just as Australia were building a bit of pressure. Played that with a bit of arrogance, actually, Smith. That was quite dismissive, really. And in behind. And Smith seems to have calmed himself after those little moments of drama earlier on in this over. He's got the measure of Josh Bolling now, he may feel. One to go. Oh, that's a little teaser. I think he did eventually leave that, but there was a twitch. There was a little prod from the doggy. Threw a paw at it. And he'll be hoping to get a few treats from Michael Johnson now. Lively start, but England will be the happier side for as long as that wicket's column reads naught. England are on top. And Smith will let those hit him all day long. Anything he doesn't feel he can score off, he's not going to go near. That's his game. He's got a select range of shots that he trusts and uses, but he doesn't veer away from them. And the tap and run. It's good from Smith. The field was spread. Recognise this as the opportunity to take a few fit singles. The early boundaries have pushed the fielders back. Brendan Scott rectifying that issue now. In close at a point to prevent those singles. And Smith was looking for the leg side then. There's a little tactical game going on between the England vice captain and the Australian skipper. It's intriguing stuff. Where will this go next? Mickey Johnson. Oh, that's well played. That's flicked and it's gone for four. He's worked hard for that, Smith. Had to play that really late to get it inside of Brendan Scott. Once again, loving the support of his England teammates, but he had to wait and wait for that to get it to Scott's left, where the gap was. There's a very good tactical battle going on between those two, Smith and Scott, at the moment. They're playing games with each other, and Smith is winning as it stands. How do Australia respond? Well, they could do with responding with a bit of noise. England outdoing them by far today. And they're open up is loving it. This is a perfect start from England. Perfect start. 21 for none. Oh, that's a nervy moment inside edge, but he survives. It's been a composed start from Smith, but he's not been without his scares and his hairy moments. Johnson just caused him a problem there. But he's done exactly what his team needed him to. He's quietened the Australians down. 
He stayed in while still keeping the score ticking over. Couldn't have asked for a better start. Riley Cornforth looking to put that right. That was good fielding from Josh, uh, Josh Bolling. Smith hit that fairly well. Josh Bolling, sorry, I'll get it right the third time. Punched again. And he will he get the four? No, Johnson's done well, but he does get the single. Just some signs of aggression here from Smith. Taking Cornforth on. I think he's judged this really well up to this point. Played with aggression. He's not just decided to shut up shop completely and stay in. Tried to put pressure back where he can. He was a little unlucky not to get four for that one. Riley Cornforth is a good bowler. And he will be a threat. That's a good delivery. Smith right behind it. Scott does the fielding. <laughs> the cry of keep going Sibbers from one of the England watching crowd there. A particular favourite player of Smith's is the Surrey and England opener Dom Sibley. Smith's style not dissimilar. Ran well there. Not the quickest between the wickets, Smith. He does sometimes turn down singles that other players might take because of that. Years of injuries have taken their toll on him. He was never the quickest to begin with, in all truth. But he's kept things going off Cornforth here. And leaves that alone. Cornforth bowled well against New Zealand. The bowled brilliantly in the ashes. He's had a great 12 months, actually, Riley Cornforth. Player of the tournament in Australia's big bash last year. Had a good domestic series preceding that as well. Driven from Smith. Lovely, but well fielded from Bolling. And it is all England at the moment. It is all Smith at the moment. Mickey Mabry, another with the potential to turn that around. Another who had an excellent Ashes and a good start to this World Cup against the Kiwis as well. He is a dangerous, dangerous bowler, Mickey Mabry. And this will be another chalk on Smith's task if he can see him off. And that's a good start. That's lifted. No run. Just as we said earlier on, Smith doesn't always take singles. There might well have been one there. Good start from Mickey Mabry. Australia needs to fight back. Oh, and he's got him missing at one. It was there to be hit. No harm in Smith going after it. He's not going to get out to that. Bowling round the wicket, going across him. He knows his stumps aren't really in danger. Missed out, though, he'll feel. That was a four ball. Oh, got a little inside tickle. Good from Mabry again. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, you can't fault the English for their enthusiasm, even if the chosen content of their song might not be to everybody's taste. Apologies if, if you were offended by that. Mabry sees the funny side, all meant in great spirits, of course. These two teams get on well. Great characters, the Australians. We've loved meeting them and getting to know them, and Mabry rattled perhaps a touch. <laughs> well, they're digging in. They are turning the screws, England. They know they're well on top of this game. That's brilliant. Good from Mabry again. I think that's off the pad. Rueful smile from Riley Cornforth at mid-on. He got given out having hit his leg earlier on in the day. All England at the moment, but Mabry's bowled a good over here. Credit to him. Fighting back well. Smith, prior to this over, had looked in very, very good nick. Oh, and again, he's just wafted at one. I wonder if there's just a touch of nerves from the England vice skipper now. Mabry has just put a halt on the scoring and created chances. He's a very, very difficult bowler to get away, Mickey Mabry. One ball to go. Oh, and again, he's had a little dart at it. That's a terrific over from Mickey Mabry. The best from Australia by a mile. Not quite as much enthusiasm in that chant from the English. Mabry finished that over well. But Smith continues to survive. And for as long as he does that, England are dominant. 
83 was the target at the start of the innings. They're more than a quarter of the way there now without any damage. Looks like a little change attack. Joey Azar. Crafty. Another one who's difficult to hit. I don't think there'll be any thought of the power play from Smith yet. He won't feel that he's got this situation to the point where that's a risk worth taking. They may well need that later on if wickets do tumble. Well, Pat McGregor has come into a sort of short leg and uh, made his presence known. Joey Azar, the new man then. Let's see what he can bring to the table. Uh, Smith plays it. Just sped on. Might have hurried him a touch, but got down to it in time. No alarms. Let's go, lads. Let's go. I think Smith has just entered the consolidation point of his innings. Azar fields well. The early boundaries have dried up. I think he's just making this advantage count and getting himself set for the long haul here. He'll have thoughts on getting these all himself. Jab and run. Good running. Just keeps the score ticking over. That was deliberate. Didn't react off the fence the way he expected it to, but he played that intentionally. He's harder than the pops. <laughs> Loving Pat McGregor's energy in there at short leg. Such a great character, McGregor. Wants to be careful, though. He shouldn't really be running in as the bowler is running in. Just see it again there. He was right in Smith's eye line, and that's caused the inside edge, maybe. Good delivery from Azar. Two to go, and it's been a decent enough over this from Joey Azar. He's done all right so far. Oh, that's good. Bit of life in that one. Don't think Smith needed to do that. Words with Pat McGregor as well. He's getting in his ear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. He's brilliant, Pat McGregor, honestly. Great, great character. And he's brought a lot of energy to that position at short leg. He's been having words with Smith throughout. In the air. Oh, and he's dropped it. Oh, but hang on. How about this? Umpire's giving it. Brilliant from Pat McGregor. What a moment for Australia. They're finally back in this game. They've waited a long time for it, but they've got Smith, and it's come from an outstanding reflex from Pat McGregor in the field. He dropped the cash initially. Smith was slow to react. It's dozy, really, from the England opener, but Pat McGregor was dead-eyed when it mattered most. Not so sure about him running in there with the bowler. He shouldn't be doing that, but that being said, he reacted quickest to the loose ball, and that is brilliant awareness, and it's a good decision from the umpire. Smith was well out. Well, so ends in innings that just looks set to take Australia out of this game for good. But Smith has gone for 24. He's done his job for England. They're pretty much a third of the way there. But has that moment brought the Aussies back into life? The hosts have been waiting for a spark. And the old boy may well have given it to them. Pat McGregor has opened up this game with a moment of magic. Brilliant cricket. The downside is that it does bring to the crease James Crowther. And he looked fabulous against New Zealand. Absolutely fabulous in making that 44. It came from just 22 balls. Destroyed the New Zealand slow bowlers. Hasn't yet been tested against pace in this World Cup. Daniel Arnold. And Crowther survives his first ball. Played relatively calmly. He is utterly emotionless at the crease, James Crowther. Ice cold. Particularly developed a reputation as a fourth inning specialist in test cricket. Under pressure and those closing moments, he calculates the game very, very well. And that could be the difference here. England will need the best of him. Driven and four, it's gone through Johnson. Crowther's up and running. That'll just relax him. Put a bit of pressure back on the Aussies. Johnson a little unlucky on the leg side there. It was just a bit quick for him, I think. Went under his foot, actually. And what's Brendan Scott saying there? They want him slapping. They want him playing cross-batted through the offside. It's a 3-1 offside field. 
over pitched and driven and McGregor again does brilliantly he's a mile a minute Pat McGregor even at that age he's absolutely astonishing the energy levels oh shot James Crowell the counter punching here judging this well he knows England are in a dominant position he's not going to let the wicket of Smith get on top of them fighting back Excellent work from Crowther, and that's a lovely shot. Judging this well, I think this is the right way to play it for Crowther, just to put the foot down a touch. Things had slowed up before that wicket. And McGregor playing his own little game of handball. Goodness me, it's all about him at the minute. Pat McGregor involved in pretty much everything that's going on. Got in Smith's head. Can he get in Crowther's? Pulled. Oh, six runs, is it? No. It's, I think it's hit that white upright pole you can see there just before the boundary buffer and bounced back into play. It's a dot ball, extraordinary. That's very unlucky from James Crowther. Two overs to go in a rotation that England are dominating, you still feel. No reason for alarm. The Australian bowlers wicketless, which bodes well for the English, but... With this Australia side, you really do just never know. They are so good and they have such great spirit. They can come back from almost any situation. They will not be feeling that this game is over at all. Well fielded. Pat McGregor it is on now. He's done a great job in the field in the last 10-15 minutes. He's got to transfer that to his bowling. Australia still need wickets. It will be a concern that there's eight down and only one on the board for them. Oh, a little teaser. Loose moment from Crowther. England will be feeling if they bat the overs, they win the game. Just don't throw your wickets away and you'll be fine. Keep nice and calm. Yeah, good from Crowther. Jakes. Yeah. Chuck it over here. <laughs> McGregor again then, halfway through the nine, 35 for one, and Crowther just getting going, hit that well, oh and I think that's gone for six, it has just a little bit of flirting with danger from Crowther, in terms of hitting it over the fence, but, oh he's opened that up beautifully, it's lovely wrist work, that's gorgeous, the little rotation, the little flip of his hands, <laughs> and look at him enjoying himself. Just riling up that crowd. <laughs> crowd behind him now, as they were for Smith earlier on. Up in the air, off the leg, I think. No harm done. No real appeal. Well, where's Crowther going? Well, I think he's saying he's hit it. Well, James Crowther's walking here. Oh, well, that's taken everybody by surprise. Tremendous sportsmanship from James Crowther. The Aussies were barely even interested. Does it just maybe glance the shoulder of the bat on its way through? We'll see if we can see here. Still on replay. Looks like knee. Oh, I wonder if it's just taken the bottom hand or the shoulder. Well, Crowther immediately signalled. Look at the look on Brendan Scott's face. He was astonished. Well done, James Crowther. Very, very good. And it's another wicket for Australia. A valuable one for them. Crowther was just settling in. Baffling scenes, really, but James Crowther deserves a lot of credit for that, especially given the pressure of the moment. Yusuf Sharif now. Not really got going with the bat. He's had some decent moments with the bat on this tour, but not really seen the best of him. He has a pension for a 40-odd, and if he gets one now, he takes England home. Full start from McGregor, builds a bit of tension. Last ball of an over that could prove match-turning. McGregor to Sharif. Oh, and he's had a nibble. It's beaten him. That's excellent from Pat McGregor. He's been a star of this day for Australia. Turning this game around almost on his own, dragging his team with him. Just changed the look of this. He's got Smith's wicket with his fielding. He's taken Crowther's with his bowling. Admittedly, a little fortuitous. But he's hauled his team back into this match. England halfway there. But just a little less sure of themselves. Still got the big fish of the captain, Ricky Borat, to come. They'll be trying to put off his presence as much as possible. Yusuf Sharif. Oh, 
McGregor, now that his bowling is done, straight back in the batsman's ear on that leg side again. He is loving it. Driven and well fielded by Brendan Scott. Kasatcha, the bowler. Full toss to start for him, but no harm done. Good from Sharif. Another very, very patient, very watchful player. You would suspect, having watched Yusuf Sharif over the years, he will probably take a safety first approach to this scenario. Won't look to really cut loose. It'll be about conserving his wicket and trying to get himself into some form in this World Cup. Oh, and he was danger there. Got away with that one. Australia just beginning to cause problems now, and that wasn't far off. Just suddenly feels a little more tense than it did four or five overs ago. Suddenly feels like there's a bit of jeopardy in this game for England. Started with the over from Maybury. Followed up then almost as a one-man show by Pat McGregor. And Kasatcha's not doing a bad job. Well, that's short and pulled. It's not in control, but it is going for four. Yusuf Sharif off the mark. Didn't get anywhere near the middle of it. Got a bit of luck off the fence. Wrong footed the fielder. Nearly created the chance. In the air and just short of Daniel Arnold. That was a good over from Kasatcha. Probing and at the halfway point, England in charge but not totally in control. Well, this was the scenes early this morning. Smith was dropped. Big life for him there. But he got going with a maximum off Severi. Started to get his offside game in good order. Not to mention his leg side game. And gave England complete control of the game, or so it seemed, until Pat McGregor delivered one of the moments of this World Cup. Outstanding bit of reflex fielding, and Smith was gone. And James Crowther. Just looked like he was starting to get his rhythm, starting to find his footwork. That in particular was lovely. But then, out of absolutely nowhere, and with no appeal whatsoever, he walked himself off. Brilliant moment of sportsmanship. Not a brilliant moment for England's hopes of winning this game. And as we've just seen a moment ago, Yusuf Sharif is off the mark in uh, a reasonably controlled style. It's 45 for two at halfway. <laughs> 38 more from England. All it will take. And this is the summation of their efforts thus far. Two options really for Yusuf Sharif. Consolidate the position and conserve wickets or have a little dart and try and break the back of it. My suspicion is that he will take the former option and play himself in. Down leg, Brendan Scott first up. So wide, some noise from the Aussie fielders, which was absent in the early parts of this innings. Just some signs that some belief is starting to course through Australian veins. If indeed it ever left them. Sharif nicely in behind it. Oh, bit of a fumble from Cornforth. Sharif wasn't alert to the possibility of a single. Flicked and that'll just be the one. Keeps that score ticking over. It's his big strength use of Sharif. He's an excellent player through the leg side, particularly on the front foot. Very rarely misses out when the bowlers bowl too straight to him. Happy to let those hit him. Again, just a bit of a deadlock at the moment. Australia can't quite break through Sharif's defences. Sharif not really making any effort to put pressure back in the other direction. Happy to see off Brendan Scott, and you can understand the logic behind that. Words again from Pat McGregor. Sharif enjoying himself, I think. 
he won't back down from the confrontation. He's a domestic captain nowadays, Yusuf Sharif. Captain's the BCE South domestic side. Oh, beaten there. Good from Brendan Scott. Good finish to that over. A good spell from the Aussie skipper. Threatened throughout. 47 for two, England. And this is the story. It looks a position of comfort, but the energy around the ground is one of pressure and tension, it feels. Certainly nobody within the WCG is taking this result for granted. England preying on Yusuf Sharif to make it nice and relaxing and easy for them. This is the tale of the first rotation for Australia as well as Brendan Scott's second over. Been relatively tight but unthreatening. Created the odd chance, but no real sustained wicket-taking pressure. They've sustained their pressure through the scoreboard, mostly. And they have to be commended for not letting the score get away from them. They have been very disciplined, and they've kept their energy up in the field. Not sure what this delay is. I think it might be a change of ball. Australia just tidying up their field. It will be Joe Severi when we resume. He was one of the better Australian bowlers against New Zealand, but his first over here went round the park. Smith got hold of him. Here we go then, finally, Joe Severi. No, oh, it's a good start from him. That one nipped back in off the surface. McGregor again did well in the field. He loves a dive pack, McGregor. Not sure it was really necessary on that occasion, but it's great entertainment. Good on him for that. That's what we're all here for, really. First and foremost, these games are meant to be fun, and they certainly have been. I've thoroughly enjoyed this game so far, and I hope you at home have too. Sharif has a slap and looks at the umpire, pleading for a wide. Doesn't get it. Severi does have a tendency to bowl the odd short and wide one, and it cost him earlier on against Smith. Won't want to make the same mistake this time around. Pat McGregor right in his face again. Imposing himself on England, McGregor. That's uh, flicked. Again, Sharif in the leg side. It's pretty much a bank up when he aims through that area. Very rarely misses out. Keeps himself ticking. It's all got a bit quiet, a bit tranquil. I think that suits England. Oh, a little nibble. They don't want to wake the Australians up. They don't want noise from the Aussies in the field. The England crowd have gone quiet. They were very, very vocal earlier on. They've gone into their shells a bit. Flicked and four. Best area for Yusuf Sharif. You're not going to get away with anything there. Half volleys on leg stump are going to go. No question of that. That's bread and butter for him. Woken the English crowd up. And debated on the single, but Brendan Scott put him off in the end. And that boundary did bring up the 50 for England. 52 for two now, just 31 more needed. It looks a banker, but as we saw in the Ashes last week, Australia continually forced implosions from England from winning situations. So nobody at the WCG will be treating this as a foregone conclusion. Australia are too good for that. Second over of the power play now, Mickey Mabry. Both brilliantly first time around, and it's a good start here. I think he had a word afterwards as well there, but Sharif long since had his back turned. <laughs> Punched. Oh, where's that going? McGregor again. He gets a life, Sharif. Very similar to the Smith dismissal, that one. I don't think Pat McGregor caught this cleanly, but if he had it done, Sharif might well have been in trouble. Set off on the run almost as a reflex. Well, McGregor never out of the game there, really, is he? Ah, uh, that'll be a wide. Takes the target to exactly 30. Every run so, so precious for England. 
I wonder if the enormity of what they're doing is starting to dawn on them. They haven't yet beaten Australia in a live game on this trip. Where's that? I think that might have been a drop. Going to see if we can get that from another angle. I think this was put down, or is it hit the sports bet sign, maybe? Oh. <laughs> Well, for the second time today, Maybury has been off the boil after the song about him. <laughs> They're having the time of their lives on this trip. It's not just a cricket tour, it's a holiday as well. They're absolutely loving it. Maybury needs to keep his head. Just signs that he can be rattled. Oh, that's a wide full toss and Sharif's done brilliantly. Well, England's, England's crowd have bought them a few extra runs there. Mickey Maybury has just lost his head in the heat of the moment. He's been put off by the England boys in the tent and Sharif cashes in. And now they sing the praises of their man, Yusuf Sharif, the soldier for them in the heat of battle at the moment. Winning precious territory for his side, for his country. And in behind that, Maybury better. Will that be a theme of this World Cup? Do England feel that Mickey Mabry can be put off of his game if they get into him vocally? They certainly felt that way with Riley Cornforth when he was batting. Just signs as this tour goes on that England is starting to pick up some mental notes from their encounters against these Aussie boys. And credit to them for not standing still and taking their ashes drubbing lying down. They've come back fighting at this World Cup. They destroyed New Zealand. And they're doing... A very similar job on the Aussie hosts at the moment in their own stadium. It's been a mighty effort this from England. But as we get closer to the finishing line, the pressure will build. Can they handle their nerves? It's Johnson. It's a good delivery. Not the first time we've seen Sharif take a midriff blow today. Oh, we've seen just about everything in this innings. The Aussies have been fantastic in the field. They're such wonderful characters. For those of you watching at home, any backyard teams out there, if you ever do get the chance to come and tour this venue and to come and play against these Aussie boys, we would urge you to take that opportunity. It is so, so worth your while. England spent over 20 grand on this trip, flew over 10,000 miles. It took four years of planning with a pandemic delay included in that. And it's been worth every second. Even though the results in the Ashes went against them and they didn't bring their best, they still love the experience. And they've brought the lessons they've learnt with them to this World Cup. And they really mean business here. This has been a very impressive day. I think Sharif left that, pulled out of that. Again, he's looking for a wide. The umpire, to be fair to him, has been very, very lenient for both sides in that regard. Sharif might well be annoyed. But he let them off of a few in the Australian innings as well. Let us not forget. Flicked into the leg side. Maybury does well. Just pressure building again on Yusuf Sharif. That's five dot balls in a row. England in a position where they don't need to force anything. Oh, he's had a little nibble. That was there to be hit, though. Can understand why he went for that. This is all about nerve for England, really. There's no pressure on the run rate. There's no pressure on the wickets column. A casual observer looking at this score would indicate a drubbing and they're going to get home easily. But you never know what goes on. Tricky things can happen in the minds of these players when things get tight. And it's why it's imperative that Australia take this game deep and try and stay in it as long as they possibly can. And in all credit to them, they have done exactly that so far. England have never really got away. It's hovered around four and over, four and a half and over all the way through. Last ball of Johnson's over. Another tidy one. Oh, it's another drop from Pat McGregor. And this time Sharif takes a single. McGregor has caught that one. I think that's in the pebbles. Well, the lead has long since left Pat McGregor's pencil. So I don't think it'll be a long-term problem for him. But I bet it hurt. <laughs> Yusuf Sharif takes advantage with a single. Oh, 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 I can feel it. Oh, I bet that's hit square in the middle of the pair. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, take your time, Patty. We sympathise. Oh, not what he wanted from his day. 
And he's still got another over to bowl at some point. Is he going to have any stomach left to do it? Goodness me. Well, this might cause a minute delay or two. It'll give Sharif time to uh, just calm his nerves. And it will give us a time to look at him as a player. These are his highest backyard scores in all formats of cricket. All three of those coming in test matches that you can see on your screen there. 2021, a particularly productive year for him. That 57 against BCE North came in his first test match as captain. Very nearly pulled something out of the fire from a desperate position there. A little different for him this time around. In the air, gone. Oh, Brendan Scott takes the catch. Yusuf Sharif out of nowhere. It's Riley Cornforth once again who steps up for Australia in a big moment, as he keeps doing of late. That's a soft dismissal, really, for Yusuf Sharif. Brendan Scott's done well to keep his head. Cornforth, not much in the delivery, but look at the energy, the release of the passion from Australia. They know that's a big wicket. Sharif has gone for 16. Took a lot of time out of the game. He's done a decent job, but he'll be disappointed. He knows that was a soft one. And Australia right back in this now, it would seem. Can they make this count? Ricky Borat is some obstacle to them, though. Batted well in last week's Ashes. And the scary thing for the Aussies will be that he had a very good series. And that probably wasn't even the best of him. Unbeaten against New Zealand, got England over the line in that first game in roughly the same requirement. Same result would be terrific for them. But you can never write off Australia, you can never write off Riley Cornforth. His reputation continues to just grow and grow in the backyard game. He is really becoming a leader in this Australian bowling attack. Strikes Borat. Just don't want this getting tense, England. A couple of boundaries would pretty much kill the contest. But the longer they're jabbing around looking for ones and prodding, the longer it becomes tricky. These wides will help. Valuable runs, each of them. It's been a problem for England. They bowl far too many. The 82 Australia made. <laughs> Cornforth getting the Maybury treatment. But the 82 that Australia made featured 22 wides from England. Had they not bowled those wides... This 62 for three would be enough to have gotten them home. Punched. Four. Cornforth couldn't prevent it. It was a good effort from Riley Cornforth. He was going the other way, but Ricky Borat's up and running. First boundary. They know this is a huge moment in the game. The England skipper is the big fish. Uh, it was up in the air. Mm, not really a chance, to be fair, to Cornforth. And the England boys getting in Cornforth here again. Ricky Borat settling in. Oh, bowled him! Oh, what a massive wicket for Riley Cornforth. And he gives it back to that crowd. And he has lived up to all the billing here. Riley Cornforth is having an excellent World Cup. And that's about his biggest moment. Well then, England. How are your nerves? Ricky Borat, the big lad, the captain, the leading batsman. The man for the big moment is gone. Not really sure what he was doing in truth. That's a complete loss of composure. I'm not sure where Ricky Borat thought he was off to. Riley Cornforth has reacted to the English crowd in some style. It's brilliant from him. He deserves that moment, Riley Cornforth. What a tremendous over this has been. It's changed the picture of this match entirely. Double strike. Sharif and Borat gone. Gurpal Singh comes to the crease. Didn't get a bat against New Zealand. England had it won before he was needed. He's bowled beautifully. An explosive play out, Gurpal Singh. If he gets these runs, he will get them very, very quickly. He won't worry about 30 balls. Won't get anywhere near that if he stays in. But he is, at times, reckless. How will he handle himself here? That was a superb over from Riley Cornforth. Absolutely brilliant. Changed the look of the match. And suddenly, England look a little pressured and a little nervy. Especially without the security of Ricky Borat in their order. Pat McGregor to Gurpal Singh. Gurpal Singh right in behind it. Looks composed. 
He's a fidgety player, Gurpal Singh. Live wire. Doesn't stand still for too long. But he is very quick between the wickets, and I wonder if that'll be decisive here. Well, off he goes. You can see it there. Scampers his way through. It was Cornforth out there who did the fielding. Uh, sorry, Maybury, actually, it was. Those chants from the England boys are a little more half-hearted now. That double strike from Cornforth has just rocked them. They're a nervous side now, England. Memories of the failures to get over the line in last week's Ashes fresh in their minds still. Will those demons be haunting them as we get into the closing stages here? They don't seem to be bothering Gurpal Singh too much. Keeping busy, and he's taking on Michael Mabry's arm in that leg side and winning at the moment. Pat McGregor needs to put a lid on this. And again, it's in the leg side, it's up in the air, and again, he'll get one. That was a bit more of a hairy moment from Gurpal Singh. He survives, not convincing, but it's another run chalked off the board. 14 the requirement now. It looks on paper so straightforward. It's amazing the tension around this ground at the moment with England so close. And jabbed into the offside, but straight to Joey Azar. But Gurpal Singh looks good at the moment. Middled everything he's played. Even that scary moment a moment ago pinged off the middle of the bat. Do England truly believe they've got it in them to beat this superb Australian side? And tentative from Singh. He just kept to watch on Joey Azar. Made the right call, I think, to stand his ground. Four overs to go now. 14 to win. Azar it will be. They still have Bolling. They still have Kasatcha. They still have Daniel Arnold. Three slow bowlers and Daniel Arnold's medium pace. All the pace has gone from Australia's bowling now. Will that be a decisive factor? So many considerations as we head into the last 20% of this innings. Cornforth does well down there. Gurpal Singh kept quiet. Joey Azar probing and teasing as he did earlier on. Punch, that's lovely from Singh and he gets four, crucial boundary. The England boys know the significance of that stroke. The target's down to 10. It's within two shots now. Very composed. He didn't push through on that. Waited for it. Just another little release of the pressure valve. He's reached for that. Didn't need to play at it. No harm done. But Joey Azar has threatened throughout this match. He's been unlucky not to take a wicket. Hooked. And caught. Is it? Has it carried? Gurpal Singh says no. Umpire says yes. Gurpal Singh protests. I wonder if Singh thinks this hasn't carried. Michael Mabry it is with the diving effort. Is it saying he got stuck in his arm? Did Singh think he dropped it? We're not going to see from this camera angle. It's a shame our back camera at the WCG is down at the moment, so we're not going to get any clarity on this for you. We will just have to take the Australians' word for it. And to be fair to those Aussies, they have been magnificent sports and very honest all the way through this tour. So I'm happy to say if Mabry says he's caught it, then he caught it. And Gerpel Singh will be disappointed, but he goes just as he was looking good. Gone for seven, and England continue to wobble. Have they been drinking? 60 for two turns to 73 for three. Sammy Dennis now. Another man who struggled on this tour. I have not seen anywhere near the best of him. Glorious player at his best. What has he got in the tank? Joey Azar now. Oh, my goodness, it's a grubber. Well, Sam Dennis lucky to survive. He's done nothing wrong, really, there, Dennis. That's just grubbed along the floor. Joey Azar curses his luck. Had that been a little straight up. England would really be in the mire. Oh, they're just signs that England nerves are beginning to collapse. Oh, and Dennis has got nowhere near that, but he will get a single. Leg by, I'm sure. Well, the umpire has given it as a run. I wonder if he got a touch of glove on it. Looked like straight off the leg. And that is the end of Joey Azar's over. It's another good one for Australia. England need nine. But the wickets continue to fall. Well, this is interesting from Brendan Scott. He hasn't gone with Daniel Arnold. He's gone with Josh Bolling. Bowled a decent first over, but this is a risk. With nine to win, is he banking on Dennis doing something reckless? 
Oh, something like that, perhaps. Where is it? It's over the fence. Oh, goodness me, Sammy Dennis, what was he doing? Oh, it's a massive gamble that's paid off for Brendan Scott in Australia. It's brilliant captaincy again. He's had a good day in the field, Brendan Scott. His changes have been spot on. And Josh Bolling has brought him a wicket from nowhere. England are falling apart. And Sam Dennis, that's a panic stroke. Oh, no. And his face says he knows it too. You've got to feel for Sammy Dennis. He's unlucky. He's had such rotten luck on this tour. Got to feel for him. But that wasn't his finest moment. And Brendan Scott has been rewarded for a very, very bold move. And they have broken into the lower order. Nine runs the target. Connor Arnold started this series nicely with the bat. Looked a sparky player, but his returns have tailed off as we've gone along. Would give him the world of confidence if he can just get these. These nine runs mean more than any 20 or 30 you might get in a test match. Down leg, wide ball. That's disappointing from Bolling. Having produced a magic moment, that's a poor one. Goodness me, it's becoming a bit breathless here. It's becoming a bit frantic. England have lost their nerve completely. Australia capitalising. Arnold pulls. Arnold gets four. Massive from England. I think so, yeah. The umpires have finally cottoned on. There's a cheer from the England boys. It halves the target. And I think, again, we have to acknowledge Australian sportsmanship here. It was Joey Azar who gave it. Don't think the umpire saw it, but it's brilliant from Connor Arnold. Massive moment for him. Tension continues to build, but that could be a decisive blow. In the air, he'll get home, will he? Corforth has a good arm and it's close, but Arnold gets in. Another one chalked off. Three to go. Surely this is England's now. Surely the Wizard will conjure up the winning moment for them. Josh Bolling and Australia know they're on the precipice. One boundary kills this game. They fought so hard to get back into it. It's in the air. He stopped it. And is it out? It is out. Oh, Brendan Scott, take a bow. Oh, my goodness me. Australia will not disappear. That was going for six. That was the game right there. Connor Arnold thought he'd won it. But Brendan Scott has produced one of the moments of this World Cup. Hasn't caught it himself. It's Bolling who does the tidying up. But it's an astonishing piece of work from Scott. The moment that could have ended this match has kept Australia in it. That was headed into the pavilion. Connor Arnold hit it well. He'll be disappointed. He thought he had that. Those five runs could be valuable. Have they been drinking? Goodness me, Australia. They can win from just about anywhere, it seems like. Surely they can't pull this one out of the fire. England need just two more to force a super over at the very least. Josh Bolling. Gets a single Maplestone off the mark first ball. England within one of parity, but that's not on their minds. What's on their minds is that finishing post. There's one ball to go from an over from Josh Bolling that has defied belief, really. Wicket wide, 4-1, wicket one. Incredible cricket going on at the moment. Can Australia keep themselves in it? Last ball for Josh Bolling. Thick edge, should be a single. A call for fumbled, it's four, and England have won. The relief, palpable, look at the joy. In truth, they deserve it. They were superb in the early parts of this match. The middle order threw it away, or threatened to, but they've clawed it back. Mapleston, the hero who gets them home. Australia, superb. They've made a game of it where they had no right to. It's another brilliant day of Backyard World Cup cricket, and this is the winning moment again. And Mapleston, it went this way and that. England's nerves shredded to bits and the celebration was terrific from them. They've just about scraped home by three wickets and they've finally beaten Australia in a moment that matters on this tour and they top the group. Big moment of this World Cup, big performance from England and on balance, they deserve it. They were excellent in the field. Brilliant days, cricket. Well done to all. Great game. Well, England made hard work of that. It all seemed so breezy when Smith was going well. What a long time ago that feels like now. Crowther and Sharif made double figures in wildly different styles, but the middle order collapsed, leaving England in need of a hero, step forward, and Mapleston. Brilliant fight back from Australia, but it came too late to stave off defeat. Great defiant effort from the bowlers. Cornforth was the star, and Bolling caused mayhem at the end there. 
but it was the batting that let the Aussies down today. Another tough call for man of the match, but Yusuf Sharif bowled magnificently well and resisted bravely with the bat. This the final story then. England winning a thrilling battle by three wickets and Australia continue to wobble at this World Cup. This is where it leaves the table. England take the early lead after two matches each and they'll be hoping to extend that advantage when they square up to New Zealand in match four. Big thanks to our sponsors Telsa Media and we'll see you next time on Backyard Cricket England. <laughs>